everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today i have a very exciting video for you guys um, as you may know i have been working with markers lately and an idea came to mind to maybe try incorporating markers into my illustration process which is to typically use watercolors and color pencils together but um this time with markers thrown in there as well so in today's video you're going to see me try out this new process for the first time and uh, i'll be walking you through how i uh, approach this illustration but before we get into today's video i just wanted to make an announcement and let you guys know that i have a huge shop sale going on right now everything in the store is between 20 to 30 percent off and i actually will not be restocking any items that may go out of stock i am in the transition of changing how i operate my online store i am in the process of just getting rid of all my old stock that said i do have a new limited edition print available um, it is of my piece called fester that i did last year and this one is special because it's actually a time limited edition print so this print is available only until the end of september and so once it sells out it is gone forever and so if you are interested definitely uh, pick it up while it is still available you have until the end of the month to um, pick it up and also enjoy the rest of the sale so this illustration came about kind of spontaneously. Um, I had been itching to do a personal illustration for quite a while. I had made attempts to do an illustration here and there, but I didn't end up liking any of them, so I never shared it with anyone. And that had me feeling quite demoralized, actually. Um, I, I felt like I was experiencing a bit of art block these past several months, but I decided to make it really easy for myself and paint something that I had already drawn in my sketchbook in the past so that I didn't have to come up with a new idea or you know spend a few days um, refining the drawing. I just picked this sketch that I had done in my sketchbook a while ago um, and I did do a few iteration drawings uh, in ballpoint pen just to see if I can push the pose a little bit more but ultimately ended up sticking pretty faithfully to the original drawing that I had done. So I started out with a wash of watercolors. I figured it was the best one to use to establish the uh, sense of atmosphere um, as quickly as possible because it's easy to cover a lot of ground with watercolors. Um, I didn't really have a clear sense of the color scheme going into it, but recently I picked up a new watercolor by Holbein Watercolors called, uh, let's see, what's it? Shell Pink, and I think I just, really wanted to use that color and i think that's all i knew going into it because i hadn't done a color comp in advance and so i was really just going into this pretty blind all i had was the drawing and the couple of ballpoint sketches that i had done which was actually really helpful for figuring out uh, how i've distributed the values because um i you know rendered them out with ballpoint pen so i knew like where i had placed the darker values in the drawing so that gave me an idea of where to place the darker values in paint so that really helped me in terms of establishing the lighting the goal of the watercolor pass was to quickly establish um, the sense of the atmosphere and the lighting which uh, gives you a sense of the mood and of course the color palette and I also try to establish some amount of texture um, by throwing around some splatters and also just being a little bit more playful with my brush strokes trying to create some uh, just random brush strokes here and there because I figured that that would help inspire me um, in figuring out how I was going to play around with the composition because again I hadn't really figured that out in advance all I knew going into it was the pose and I had all the rest of the piece to contend with and to try to figure out uh, how I was going to arrange 
like certain elements in the piece. So yeah, I was uh, trying to establish all that with the watercolor pass and I was actually really happy with what I ended up with um, after I was done with the watercolors. I was pretty satisfied um, with how it looked and I felt like I was ready to move on to the next stage, which was bringing in the markers. So of course I was very nervous bringing in markers over what I had established um, at this point because I really liked how this looked and you know because obviously markers are very permanent once you apply it it's pretty hard to you know cover up or try to hide or move it around it's you know what you put down is what you put down so I was quite nervous going in with the markers but I figured I hadn't invested that much time um, up to this point so if I'm going to mess it up then let's mess it up you know early on so that it's not a huge time sink if I have to scrap it and start all over again so I decided to go in with a really light warm shade of uh, marker to do a shadow pass with and I have been trying to establish the shadows earlier on in my illustration process because when I can see my drawing coming together early on that helps me keep moving forward instead of getting stuck in one area like noodling and rendering while losing the sense of the overall picture it really just helps me uh, keep moving forward in the process without getting stuck in one little area that doesn't really matter in the end. So yeah, going in with the marker uh, was really nerve-wracking at the start, but once I got into it, uh, it really wasn't so scary, <laughs> which is really such a relief. I really try to treat it like a sketch, you know, uh, this is not a precious illustration that I had labored hours over. I really just try to think of it like a sketch in my sketchbook because I really love uh, some of my sketches sometimes when I have no expectations going into it and I'm just playing around, throwing color around, throwing values around. I really like that uh, looseness and the spontaneity that you get in your sketches and um, when I try to do an illustration, I really tend to stiffen up and get really overly precious with every part of the process. So I think bringing the marker into it, at first it was like, oh no, what have I done? But once I got into it and I started just bringing it into more parts of the illustration, I think something in me just kind of let go and uh, really embraced this process and really allow myself to just make mistakes and let things just kind of unfold on the page. I was actually really struck by how well the marker went on the paper. This paper is the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press Watercolor Paper by Legion. Um, it is supposedly 100% cotton, but it does not feel nearly as luxurious as the Arches 100% cotton paper. But I have been enjoying using it for my mixed media illustrations. Um, and so I, I just kind of went into it with blind faith that the marker would go on uh, fairly predictably on this paper and you know what it did and that was a pleasant surprise and I was also surprised how well the marker just layered over top of that initial layer of watercolor I'm actually not sure in my mind I went into this mixed media illustration thinking like oh this people don't do this people don't mix markers with watercolors like this is not something that is commonly done but I'm actually not sure if that is true. Um, I personally don't remember seeing a lot of people incorporate watercolors with markers, but maybe I just haven't been paying close enough attention. I feel like in general, it is kind of frowned upon to mix uh, watercolor with markers because markers are alcohol based and um, I know that they're supposedly not very archival like at all. So uh, it is probably pretty frowned upon in the art community, but 
you know, I really just wanted to try something new uh, for the benefit of me figuring out like the best way to approach my art process. And so yeah, I was personally really pleasantly surprised how well the markers applied over top of the watercolors. I did quickly come to realize that individually testing each marker before using them was a very tedious process and I had a hard time keeping track of what color was what. So I actually did end up um, taking the time to finally swatch all of these markers onto the swatch card and that actually was really helpful in the end having the swatch cards to refer to instead of uh, testing each individual marker out before using them even though I had kind of uh, griped about that in my last marker video I think in the end I will eat my own words having swatch cards is very helpful So I established the general shadow pass with this neutral color and then I started to glaze the local colors over top of it. And with the markers, I actually really liked the um, sketchy lines that I was getting with them because to me it looked more like a sketch and I think that like subconsciously just kind of helped me relax with the illustration more and not get overly precious with it. And so I really try to embrace the kind of streakiness of the markers and use it more as a design element instead of having it be a mistake. So I like intentionally would space out uh, the marker strokes to create those like uh, lines in between because I kind of like I kind of like how it made it look like cross hatching instead of um, making it look like I tried to do a solid. A smooth patch of markers but kind of failed at it so so yeah like while I was working on this I really felt like I had kind of come a long way um, from being such a purist about a mixing art media um, because I <laughs> for the longest time I would work primarily in watercolors and I, I I couldn't even bring myself to use color pencils over top until until just over a year ago so I feel like I've come a long way since then uh, now I really have fully embraced the idea of mixed media and I have embraced the idea of just using whatever um, you have on hand to make the kind of artwork that you want to see, to make art that is easy for you to make. Um, why make it hard for yourself? Art is already hard. I was really nervous going in with the more bolder colors with the markers. I wanted the shirt to be this uh, light periwinkle blue, but the best marker I had for it, it ended up being darker than I anticipated it being. And so initially when I lay down, laid down the bolder local colors, I was like, oof, did I make a mistake? Should I have gone in and established those colors with the watercolors instead of the markers? And I think I could have done that as well, um, but I just kept trucking on and I, I just told myself uh, I will be able to bring color pencils over top of it to lighten certain things. And that is what I ended up doing after I established all the colors uh, or pretty much all the colors with the markers. I go kind of back and forth from that point with color pencils and markers. Uh, with the color pencils, it was easier to kind of control the colors if I felt like with the markers, I had gone a little bit too dark, but I actually, I feel like I didn't end up using too much color pencils. Um, I actually did a lot of the rendering with the markers themselves. And I think the biggest difference with using markers in my process is um, seeing things coming together more quickly, like earlier on in the process, whereas with just watercolors and color pencils alone, I think I spent a lot of time in the watercolor stage trying to build everything up and it kind of gets to a point where things start to look a little bit muddy and a little bit over textured because I'm applying a lot of layer watercolor layers over top of one another. Um, but with the markers, I felt like I could kind of bypass all that and in just like one fell swoop, 
in just a couple of strokes, I can get my work to that point um, much, much faster. So that is really insightful for me and exciting uh, to know going forward. One of my favorite painting moments in this whole uh, process is when I went over the hat with a more neutral colored marker to tone down all of the colors. Doing that made the hat feel more like it was going back into space because it toned down all of the colors and it separated the hat from the elements that are more um, in the light and, and closer to the camera. So I found that really satisfying and it's one of my favorite moments in the process and I thought I would kind of point that out in case you miss it. So once I had the figure mostly figured out, um, I decided to finally move on to the rest of the composition. So I kind of had in mind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to draw some very abstract shapes to fill in the composition with and the shapes that i had in mind i was actually inspired when i was out with a friend we were out shopping and i came across these uh, acrylic earrings that i guess made an impression on me um, they were just these really irregularly shaped like speech bubbles or something also because i have the tendency to lean on kind of go-to shapes um, for my design and so I really wanted to kind of switch things up and incorporate shapes that I normally don't uh, do so these kind of I don't know irregular like rings were definitely new for me and I was really really nervous going in with the markers to draw them because this kind of thing makes me really nervous. First of all, I'm using markers, it's permanent. I won't be able to fix it if I don't like the way I drew it. And I'm just really bad at drawing anything very graphic. So before going into this, I did do a very crude mock-up on Photoshop uh, just to figure out how big these shapes are gonna be, where they are going to be placed approximately in the composition, and what color rings are going to be where, and just a general shape and size of them. It's very crude. I probably should have um, thought it out a little bit more carefully because once I did go in with the markers, I, I, you know, I had a general sense of the shape of them, but I didn't know exactly like where all the twists and turns were gonna be. Uh, not knowing that makes me really nervous, but at the same time, I also feel like if I had gone through the trouble of like figuring out exactly what the shapes were gonna be, then trying to replicate that in the final illustration, like that would probably also trip me up in trying to replicate something um, exactly. And so I felt really bold going in with the markers to draw those uh, shapes in. And I know you won't be able to tell on camera because of the power of editing, but I was agonizing between drawing each and every shape. I was probably taking like 10 minute breaks in between. Just like, oh Lord, I hope I don't mess this one up. You know, um, I hope that they're going to look all right in the end. And uh, you know what? In the end, uh, even though I don't like each individual shape, I felt like I could have drawn them better. Um, in the end, with everything in place, I don't zero in on those little like perceived mistakes as much. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I'm really learning to just embrace <laughs> things more, I embrace, I guess, uh, mistakes and and turn them into maybe happy accidents or use them as a springboard to to figure out what my next steps are which does help me keep moving forward and that for me has been the healthier approach than just sitting and agonizing over each and every step So these marker shapes were really scary to do, but I actually really like how they looked 
and once I had them in place, I felt like I wanted to create more of an atmosphere between the shapes because um, these shapes just felt like they were kind of sitting over top of everything and because I wanted the piece to have a more layered look, I decided that I wanted to uh, throw in some more shapes into the background and have them look um, different from those initial kind of rings to create a sense of depth. And so I tried to find marker colors that were very um, similar to the established background color of the watercolor wash so that I wouldn't create too much of a difference in terms of the value contrast so that those shapes would look like they were further back into space and then those more colorful rings uh, then looked more like they were in out in front to hopefully give that illusion of space. I love when an illustration gets to this point in the process where I have basically all the elements in place, all the like the compositional elements kind of figured out and the figure is a largely like finished but just needs some refinement. I love this kind of refinement stage where I kind of feel like, okay, I can shut my brain off a little bit. Um, and I can just focus on refining the drawing, refining the rendering, and um, fixing up the colors and the values. This for me is when I feel like the illustration kind of comes to life a little bit. Uh, I really feel like I can just kind of dig in and um, do what I think I am best at, which is to render and make things look pretty and make the colors feel harmonious with one another. So I really, really liked how this piece was coming out at this point, but I did feel like I wanted to make it a little bit more moody and um, I felt like the character could be interacting with the background a bit better. Um, at this point, it just felt like she was just kind of floating and not really being a part of that environment just yet. So my solution to doing that was to bring in some markers and drawing, drawing some lines with the markers um, from her head and extending it out into the background. And I felt like that uh, did help incorporate her with the background a little bit more as well. It kind of gave a sense of motion to the figure which I really liked. And again, I really wanted to kind of embrace the streaky quality of the markers because I really like how it made the illustration look just more sketchy. And, and I wanted to play up on that and really highlight it. So I came to this point in the piece and I really, really liked it, but I did feel like the background overall could be darkened a little bit um, and have the colors punched up a little bit more because after having all the figure filled in and with all the background elements um, in place, the background was starting to feel really pale in comparison um, because now there is more context to compare with. And I also felt like all the elements at the top of the composition was a little bit um, too contrasty and so a little bit distracting from the character. And so yeah, this is when I made the really tough decision to go back in with the watercolors uh, and apply it over everything and try to accomplish all that I just said, you know, to diminish the contrast of the um, elements at the top of the composition and to also impart more of a clear like gradient going from darker at the top to lighter at the bottom and also more color in the background. So obviously this was really nerve wracking because like I said, I really liked the piece at this point. You know, I, I think I could have stopped at this stage and I would have been perfectly almost perfectly content with it. I think most of you watching maybe even think that as well, like, oh no, you probably should stop at this point. You don't want to do 
too much. You don't want to overwork it. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you, but um, I felt like, you know, I had come this far. Let's just try it out. Um, I actually had a lot of faith that it would work. Um, because why not? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why wouldn't it work, right? So I did go in with the watercolors over top of everything. I just mixed in some more of that pink color and I tried to uh, just go over with a light layer of that um, as evenly as possible. And, and luckily, you know, it worked out. The watercolor went over pretty much as I predicted it to. Um, and I was able to uh, do what I set out to do, which was to diminish the contrast of all the elements in the top of the composition. And yeah, you know, as I kind of predicted, it went over pretty well, pretty predictably. I don't think I ran into any real trouble with it. The only thing is uh, going over top of it with watercolors again, um, because I guess some of the watercolor pigments are granulating, it did impart some amount of texture over top of everything. Um, so the marker lines didn't look as crisp and clean as they did before I went in with the watercolors. So that is something to keep in mind. However, I personally didn't mind that. Um, I felt like it actually gave the piece a more kind of layered look to it but definitely something to keep in mind going forward if i want to preserve the crispness of the marker lines then i probably wouldn't go over top of it with watercolors afterwards but i think in this case it helped uh, tone down some of the harsher lines and hopefully bring more uh, focus onto the character which is what i wanted So going over top of everything with watercolors, I would say was a success. However, I was naive to think that that would be the last stage of this process because I did realize that maybe it took out a little bit too much of the contrast near the top. So I do actually go back in with color pencils and markers again to bring some of that back out and to bring some of the colors back out as well, just for that last touch of refinement. So yeah, there was a lot of hopping between mediums um, in this process, but it all just kind of worked surprisingly well. I, I don't think I had any like major surprises. I was really shook how well these uh, media just worked so well together. I didn't have many expectations going into this piece at all and i was really happy with what i ended up with like really really happy especially because like i said i had been struggling to uh, do a personal illustration for a while and had been feeling pretty demoralized and um, thought i was going through some kind of funk so i personally feel really invigorated by this process uh, i kind of want to go back into my sketchbook and find other uh, drawings that I liked and just don't think about it and just try to paint it try to bring it to life in color I've always wanted to uh, Develop a more spontaneous process and I feel like with the markers I am one step closer to maybe figuring out what that process is for me what that more like spontaneous process looks like where I don't have to plan every inch of the painting with multiple drawings multiple color comps because the more time I allow in between all of these steps, I feel like the more precious I get with the piece and the more pressure I put on myself to do a good job. So I'm always looking for ways to eliminate time in between these steps and bringing the markers in to establish the local colors, to establish the values very early on in the painting stage. I really felt like that eliminated a lot of the steps that I would have been trying to achieve with watercolors. And because of the permanence of markers, it just kind of kicked my brain into gear from rendering and noodling mode to just like get things done mode, you know? <laughs> just keep things moving, get things done, work with what's on the page and get inspired by what's on the page and improvise from that point. 
So yeah, uh, if I haven't made it clear, I really love how this piece turned out. I really thoroughly enjoyed figuring out this process for the first time. I am so excited to uh, use this process again going forward with future illustrations and seeing what else I can come up with. Using markers made it feel like uh, both painting and sketching at the same time, which I think has been really helpful for me in loosening up. And I think it'll also be really helpful in translating my sketches, which I love, uh, more faithfully in painting. If I can apply my values and colors more like I am sketching in my sketchbook, maybe that maybe that will really help me make my illustrations have that same quality as my uh, sketches and drawings that I often feel have more of that quality that I am looking for in my work. And I know some of you out there will be asking, well, markers are not archival. Um, what of the longevity of this piece? Aren't the colors all going to fade in like record time? You know, you are probably right. I have not had much experience with markers. I don't have any marker illustrations on hand that I've had for a long time. And so I really can't attest to that. But I guess uh, that is the general kind of consensus that markers are not long lasting in terms of light fastness. So yeah, maybe the colors here will fade over time, uh, maybe rather quickly. But at this point in time, I really don't mind. Um, I'm just kind of having fun um, trying out a new art process. And even if I were to sell this piece, sell this original, I don't know. I don't think I really mind as long as as long as a collector is fully aware that this is a mixed media process that used markers and they are aware that markers do fade in terms of the colors and the values over time and the appearance of the illustration is going to evolve and change over time as long as the collector is aware of that going into it and they don't mind i don't think i mind and so i'm not going to worry about it for now i'm just going to keep exploring this process because i really thoroughly enjoyed it and see what happens So that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this one because I know I did. I'm really, really happy to finally share a personal illustration with you guys, as well as this new um, illustration process. Don't forget to check out the shop sale while it's still going on until the end of the month. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And with all that, thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!